Hello my creative friend, Olga Sabi here and welcome to new fluid acrylic painting tutorial. I got a new stencil here, check this one out, isn't it gorgeous? This is a beautiful lotus design and this is what we're gonna use along with the acrylic pouring technique. So the plan is to create a really beautiful, vibrant, sensual color base. You can see I have a bunch of reds here prepared and once it's ready, there's something else I want to try that's completely new. I haven't tried it before. And you know what? I think I'm gonna keep it a secret. Keeping a little intrigue for this video. So doing one step at a time, step number one, let's create a beautiful base. So let's get started. Inner strength is a secret message today, working with quite powerful symbols. And of course, the red color is a symbol on its own. So that one definitely stands for strength and energy. And for my base, I have prepared, I have custom mixed pretty much all of these colors, except for maybe one or two, because I want to have some darker, some lighter to create the really movement and depth in the base. And this is a canvas. It's 18 by 24. You see I have painted the sides with red previously and I have taped to create a little dome to because I'm going to be doing some tilting and I want to catch all my drips with that. So dirty cup, here we come. I have already lined my colors in the order that I want to add them and I'm just going to be pouring them right in the cup. I really don't mind if they overmix because there is nothing that can get muddy between those colors, but I do want to have some lighter and darker parts. Also, some of these are metallics. Some of these are not metallics, <laughs> iridescent colors. So quite a multicolor base. And some co red colors here are warmer, some colder. So that will also help to keep it interesting. And the base red, the, the primarily dominant one in here is carmine red. This is very beautiful rich strong red color it's a little on the darker side so that's perfect i'm not gonna pour out this one i'll save it for my corners for this one this is not black i mixed red um some a little bit of magenta and black here for the to create really some shades in here i think i also want to add in some gold because I want my lotus to be gold. I don't want to have a lot of gold in my base, but just a couple highlights here and there. All right, this is quite a cup. I want to torch this. Let's pour this out. I think it's looking beautiful. What do you think? I especially like the colors at the bottom because there were less of a mix. There was some pure, uh, lighter color that is a mix of orange and copper, like that. Okay, let's torch this. All the colors are mixed with water. I will include more details in the description. This is plenty of paint. I want to create a little bit of wiggle, so I'm tilting not just into corners, really breaking down the design, getting those colors to dance. That is what I do, making colors dance. This is definitely a very strong color palette. You can manipulate with the weight of your paint to really create even more wiggly designs in your dirty pour. Let's remove the paint and that will allow it a little bit of the paint on the top to go down the sides. I don't like this color here. It's a tiny bit too overmixed. So I'm tilting some extra of that. I'm super happy about the way this base looks. A lot of movement, yet it's very subtle because the colors are overmixed a little bit. There are some darker parts, some lighter parts, but it's not overly contrasting. But we are about to add some contrast. So let's jump to the next part. 
the painting is dry, the first layer of the painting is dry, you try to really go check out. It's very monochrome, subtle, yet very strong color palette. You can see a lot of shine from the iridescent and metallics that I used. I am not going to add my Lotus stencil just yet. Today I want to try something new. I want to try masking out one area of the painting and actually adding a whole layer of glaze, layer of more transparent, semi-transparent uh, paint, so that some of the base layer... Oh, <laughs> look at that. This is why I wear gloves, because the moment I enter the studio, I have immediately paint on my head, on my hands, and sometimes on my head, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyways, I'm gonna add a thin layer of glaze in the center of the painting, and then on top of that, I'm gonna add my stencil. What I want to achieve, I want to make the center part darker, but not just one solid color. I want all these beautiful lines and metallic shine from underneath to shine through it. Let's get to it. I have mixed some color here. I have mixed some red. I added a bit of black too, to really make really dark, rich, deep, burgundy color. And I added some gloss and gloss medium and varnish into it, just to really make a very transparent layer of color. So next step, I'm going to mask it out. This is 20, This is 18 by 24, so this side is 18. It's easy to divide by 3. Actually, here I already marked, so let's mark on the other side. So just 6 and 6. And I'm going to use just regular masking tape. Try to do a straight line here. To make sure it's really sticking on nicely so there are no air pockets just really work it in with your finger okay and same on the back side all right so just now using a regular flat brush i'm gonna go ahead and spread it spread it over and as I do that, you're going to see that this layer is actually quite transparent. Taking care of the sides as well. Making sure our design goes all the way to the edge. Of course, if the edge is not taped. The whole area is covered. I just need to make sure now that the layer is even. So keep working it in. And you can start seeing the underneath layer showing through. I really, really like how it's working out so far. Super happy. And it's better to work in, in thin, very thin, very transparent layers. If you want to build up a less transparent layer, it's better to let the first one dry and add another one on top. Okay, let's remove the tape and see how that turned out. Beautiful sharp edge. Perfect. We're ready for the next step. Finally, finally, time to apply the lotus stencil. So let's get to it. First of all, going over with some gloss gel. So I just did a little mistake. I pushed the gel underneath the stencil. This is not good. But on the bright side, I'm going to show you how to fix when something like this happens. But I need to work quickly before my gel begins to dry and adhere my stencil to the canvas. This is perfect. Next, let's apply some gold. So here I have the iridescent gold, the same one as I used in my base. Uh, and my base gold, it almost all vanished into my reds. But there's still some of that shine. And I think that would really help my stencil design pop beautifully. This gold is super bright. Here I have some copper leftovers from my previous stencil project, so I want to add a little bit of that, especially closer to the outer edges of this design, 
I think they will look really cool. I want this copper to sort of blend in with the gold. Yeah, something like this. That will create a glowing effect from really bright light part in the center and it's fading out towards the edges. Finally, I think it would be nice to add just a few small accents of the carmine red. It's the base color in my base layer. <laughs> it's one of the main ones and I think that can help me create some really cool accents. So let me think for a second. One more right here. Are you guys ready? Let's do the reveal. Oh, I'm so excited to see how this one turns out. You guys are gonna see it first. Ooh, I love it. I do see a couple messed up sections though. See right here, and this is where I push the gel under the stencil. Otherwise, Super gorgeous. I love how the line really emphasizes it. It's very easy to remove gel or anything else while it's still wet. The only important part is that make sure you don't smudge the design. So turn and rotate the canvas as needed. Because if you do that, that's it's going to be a lot more challenging to fix it. There are a couple of other small things that I would like to have fixed, but I'm gonna do it when it's dry. I think I just don't want to disturb it anymore. And this one, it has more, a little more moving nature. Like it didn't turn out as sharp as some of my previous stencils. And you know what? I think it's kind of cool because it's Lotus. It's not Mandela, so it's less sharp. There's something about it. So let's just say that's how I planned it. Okay, but I got another idea of what I want to do for this painting. I love how my line makes the rest of the design pop and I think I want to embellish it just a little more. It's so cool that the design underneath is shining through. So, I'm gonna take again, I'm gonna try to be, go precisely on the border and I want to add a little line just inside here. So I'm gonna use this paint that I have leftovers from this project. I removed some from my stencil and some from my previous project and I think I'll just go with my brush. And first let's add roughly where it's going to be. And then we're gonna do just dab 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 and that will create texture and more less uniform line. Yeah. So I ended up adding lines and texture all on the top and the bottom here. I actually also added on the sides. I think it really completes the look because I have paints on the side as well for this one. Cover painting with varnish and it's all ready in its shining glory. So I really love this painting, how it turned out. And the lotus is such a beautiful, powerful symbol and it can symbolize couple different things depending on the culture and tradition and for me in combination with such a strong red color it symbolizes strength resilience and affection and this is the kind of energy i tried to put in this painting i think it worked out what do you think 
I'm glad that I used varnish and not resin for this one because I keep touching the texture here on the lines and on the mandala, on the stencil as well. It's so cool. I just love it. And I like that I added a couple different uh, colors inside here. So the gold and copper and pops of red, it definitely makes the overall look softer and it just adds the dimension. Speaking of dimension, oh my god, you guys, I love the look of the dark darker section with some of the design shining from underneath oh my god it totally adds it to the whole different level and i feel like i'm about to explore something really awesome i really want to experiment more with this style and look so i hope you're ready for the journey i hope you're ready to explore different embellishment styles along with me the base in this one turned out pretty cool all a lot of beautiful soft lines with some of the gold copper and iridescent red shining in the base as well and my stencil design it didn't work as sharply and perfectly as usually my uh, textured embellishments do so in my next video i do want to use similar uh, style and make those lines sharp and perfect and we'll see how this works but for this one i think it actually adds to this softness and magical look of this lotus so Tell me, what do you think? How do you like the outcome? How do you like this new embellishment? I would love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.